Hello. Hi, welcome to our session for the um, We really appreciate your time. Thank you for Zoom. That's making it a bit easier for everybody. Um, so yes, I would just quickly like to introduce my two guest speakers. Um, Moritz. Moritz. <laughs> Moritz. Moritz. <laughs> He is a professional town planner at Multiprof, specializing in land use applications. He completed his master's degree in 2017 at the Northwest University as a top achiever and is a very passionate about town planning. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. And your knowledge that you're going to share with us today. We really appreciate it. And then just to my opposite, and I'm awkward role is a land surveyor in a private practice since 1995. He specializes in survey planning of all types of surveys. He also organizes survey teams to expedite larger surveys efficiently and then liaise with engineers, architects, and town planners and regional planners. Okay, thank you so much for your time and your knowledge that you're going to share. Um, I think everybody is looking forward to it. Okay, thank you. And I think, obviously you all know. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. most of you know me. Aubrey Slam, I'm, I'm the CEO of uh, Multiprof uh, Property Intelligence. Uh, the purpose of today is to inform you on some of the websites that is very usable uh, for property professionals. Uh, we're going to use, as far as the GIS uh, for municipalities, we use uh, the Swanee as an example. Uh, most of the metropolitan um, councils have GIS websites. They all work a bit differently. Uh, but if you see the example that Moritz will explain to you, you can just uh, go to your council's website and, uh, and, and see what is available uh, and perhaps ask one of the people at the council to explain to you if you don't understand everything. So, uh, uh, from Multiprof side, uh, just move this slide for us. Uh, okay, uh, just a bit about Multiprof. We are town planning and architectural company, uh, but we also uh, do quite a bit on sectional titles, uh, environmental, we do property inspections, but uh, we are mainly a town planning company. We do all types of town planning applications. And then we do lots of uh, building plans, especially for the property industry, uh, mostly as built plans. And then we obviously also offer this type of training that we're going to look at today uh, to make the life of property practitioners easier. So over to Moritz. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I'm going to show you how to use the, the Trony GIS system. So you'll see um, I've put in on Google Trony GIS, and then you come to the results, um, Maps and GIS, then you can just click on there, um, and then you'll access the site whereby you can um, accept the terms and conditions, and you can click on each GIS uh, viewer. You can also use the mobile viewer if you would like to use your phone, um, but we usually only um, use the EGIS viewer um, on the desktop. Then if you go to the, the, to the site, um, you can just press uh, or select um, search, and then you'll uh, also see all download, downloadable content on the EGIS uh, viewer. It's freely available. And the website is based for you in Google Chrome. Uh, if we go on, this is um, when you press a uh, search, you'll get to this um, page where you can search for um, properties. You'll see um, on the left top top hand corner, you, if you have the property description, you can um, put in the earth number as well as the portion number and the township name. Then you also have an, an option to put in a street name and street number on this side. You can um, put sectional title scheme um, details in here and the unit number. When you, when you want to um, access a township, if you don't have the, the, the um, property details, you can um, go to township search or farm name search. 
Um, then there's also a GIS key where you can find the details on your municipal account of the property. You can put it in here um, or you can merely um, select a point of interest like the mainland um, mall or a hospital to submit your query there. So in this case, I've, I've selected portion one of F931 Milo Park. And then when you search or submit the query, you'll get to this page, which shows you the GIS key, the property number, the township name, the street number, the street name. Um, here it will tell you if it's an earth or a farm portion, and then also um, the size of the property. Uh, which is 3,871 squares. And then you can, if you want to go further to, to the GIS, where, where all the layers are, you can just go to um, Zoom to Map. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maurice, perhaps yes. I can just interrupt you shortly. Uh, you might ask yourself, why would you like to do this? What is the use of this? Now, uh, being a property practitioner means that you are the expert. So you need to have as much information on the property that you're going to list or that you're going to show to a potential buyer. And uh, by using this website, you can gain so much information about the property that when you arrive at the site, you can tell your seller a lot of things about his property. Yeah, and they might not even know. Yes, that they might not even know. And that just put you in a different class of property practitioner than the person that would just pitch up and say, uh, you know, how much do you want for your property? So being a property practitioner means you are the expert and the information that uh, Moritz is now uh, showing you is valuable to have when you list the property or take out a, a, a buyer? Yes, so, so in this case, um, I've, I've um, selected this property, portion one of 931 Miller Park, which is highlighted with the earth boundary you can see in blue here. Um, then this is the basic map of the GIS system, which shows the property description. There in light blue, you'll see the street address, is number 61. It shows you all the um, street, um, streets, as well as um, you'll see there's like a sectional title um, scheme. And um, yeah, this is basically just, a, just a, um, the basic map, the GIS map. Um, here, here you can also have, there's, there's a few other options where you can measure um, certain boundaries if you want to. Um, there you, you also have the, the, um, the legend um, and then here you have, you have options to select which is the layers um, for, for the different information you want to access. So if I, if I go on, um, you'll see I uh, selected here sectional, um, sectional schemes and restrictions. Um, so the restrictions is all the, all, all the, all, all the servitudes. Um, for, for like access purposes, um, then you'll see these little blocks. Um, they are all the, the sectional uh, uh, schemes registered over the properties. And um, yeah, so this is basically just the layers um, over the, the basic map of, of the GIS system. Then when I continue, um, I've, I've selected here yeah, the aerial photo. On the, on the layers list. Um, so here you can see the boundary line um, in relation to the aerial um, photo of the property. Um, this is 99% accurate, um, but it can, it can change, or um, the boundary line can be uh, changed a bit from the, from the actual um, buildings and the, the boundary. Um, then when we go on, here I've selected the RSDF um, layer. So I've, I've put in a short description here. It's the regional um, spatial development framework. 
It's a spatial development framework that guides and informs all development. It indicates a desired development and land use patterns for um, different areas. So in this case, um, the municipality has set out certain areas where they would like certain um, land uses to take place. Um, for example, the light blue is where they would like um, business type of uses. The darker blue is where they would like um, mixed use development. Um, then the, the um, red, this light brown and the orange is where they would like uh, residential densification. Uh, where the orange is, is residential uh, identification up to 80 units per hectare. Uh, the, light, the light brown is up to 120 units per hectare. And then the, um, the red is up to 200 units per hectare. Okay, and Maurice, perhaps I can just uh, come in there again. How would it assist you as a property practitioner if you have a developer that is looking for uh, a property to redevelop for high density uh, residential, for instance, and he comes and he gives you an address or an earth number of a property that's available, uh, all you have to do is to go to the RSDF, uh, as Moritz is indicating to you. If it indicates light blue or something, you know that that is uh, for offices and council will not support application for a high density residential. So you can immediately uh, tell your developer that property is not going to be suitable because council will not support a rezoning application. But if it's one of the orange properties, uh, then you can start investigating and see how many units per hectare council uh, would support. And at that stage, it's worthwhile to um, contact a, a town planner uh, to assist you with the details, because at least now you know that property has some potential. So you're going to save yourself lots of time running off the properties that uh, that's not going to be uh, suitable for your client's need. Um, we often assist uh, property practitioners of, as well to interpret the RSDF, uh, but it's important that you know about it and that you know how to, to get the information uh, very quickly from the website. Yes, is, it possible, is it possible to ask questions or do we wait until the end? Sorry for interrupting. I just want to ask on the zoning issue, very important question, or shall we wait until the end, sir? I think uh, uh, if you can put your question in the chat, perhaps, then we will run through all the questions uh, at the end of the presentation. Okay. Um, I just want to add that um, these layers in light blue and orange um, I haven't shown it here, but there is a legend which you can access um, at the right top corner um, to show different layers, uh, the light blue, and the darker, or the red, and the light brown, and etc. I think that's on the next slide. Yeah, on the um, slide. that's the zoning one. Oh, yeah. the zone. okay. Um, then, here I've selected um, all the sanitation and stormwater. So this plan or the, this layer shows where all the uh, municip municipal sewer lines are, as well as the municipal um, stormwater. Um, you'll see also that the uh, municipal um, sewer lines uh, as arrows uh, in which the direction flows. Um, yeah, so you can, you can just access this by ticking these boxes in the layer. Um, Box. Will that automatically appear, that layer manager? Uh, um... Yes, so I'll show you on the next slide, there's an option where you choose the layers okay. list. Yeah. Um, or let me just quickly go here. I'm just going to skip a few slides. So this is the layers list and this is the legend. Okay, so yeah. Um, here I've selected the, the municipal sewer line um, as well as the, the aerial photo of a property. Um, you, yeah, you'll see the, the property is Mayers Park Extension 8, 
Um, this is the size of the property. This is the, the property RF number. It's, it's RF 848, Mayor's Park Extension 8. And um, so this can show you the, the boundary line in relation to the aerial photo as, as indicated. Um, these boundary lines can, can be a bit off since it's uh, an aerial photo. But here you'll see there's a, um, a, a house or outbuilding, an outbuilding yeah. built over a sewer line. I think this is important um, to, to see which properties may have been built illegally over a sewer line. And, um, but in this case, it can also be that the sewer line or the overhang of this outbuilding um, is over the sewer line, but not the, the, the building itself. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, just uh, perhaps advice as well, when you deal with a website, uh, if you try to uh, view too many layers at the same time, it can also happen that it gets so confusing. So uh, try to not do more or two of the layers at the same time. At this stage, this one is, is excellent. You have the aerial photograph switched on and the services so you can see exactly what's happening. Yeah. If you also add the regional spatial development framework or the zoning to that, it will become so confusing that you can't see anything. So switch off some of the layers that you're not using and only view the layers that's important. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, as Moritz said, it's a very good idea to look at uh, the municipal services, especially where you have LAPAS and things on the property. Often they are built in or uh, over servitudes for municipal services. And we always get problems to get building plans approved for those things. So it is a good idea to know up front uh, before you even go out to the property that there might be some structures that is problematic. Um, if your uh, seller is a civil engineer working for council, don't take him on and tell him, listen, I know there's a sewage pipe. Sometimes there is some mistakes, but be aware that you investigate the matter further, um, or you can perhaps specifically ask the seller, do you have approved building plans for that structure? Because it seems like there might be a problem uh, as far as uh, the servitudes are concerned. Thanks, yeah. Moritz. Okay. So if I move on, this is the, the last um, layer that I'm gonna discuss. This is the zoning um, of the properties which are selected. So here you'll see um, in this case, um, the, the property I'll show you now, the, you can also access the layers list. Um, yeah, the top right corner. So yellow is for example, residential one. Um, in this case, it's special uh, for this property. It's not, it's, it's, it doesn't show here, but if you scroll down, it will show special which means that um, it, has a, it has a unique definition for, for the, the current zoning of this property, um, where residential one is usually um, for, for one dwelling house. And then um, we, should, we should just make sure that um, with, to, to, to make sure which rights are approved for each property, you will have to get a zoning certificate which can show more detail. Uh, for example, with a residential one um, primary right, you have a, a one dwelling house that you can erect, but as a secondary right, you can um, obtain consent from council to, uh, for example, have guest house rights or commune rights or, um, yeah, you can have, wedding, for instance. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or a crash, or a crash and um, right. Yeah. So it's important, this is just the basic um, um, layer of the, the zoning of each property, uh, which shows the primary rights, um, but then you'll have to um, obtain a zoning certificate to see what exactly has been approved for each property, um, yeah, for the property you um, are looking at. So yeah, that's, 
Okay, uh, thanks, Boris. I think that's a that's a very quick uh, overview. As I said, there's there is more to it, uh, and it's obviously ideal if you can sit with your laptop and you are connected as well, and one can play around. So perhaps at the later stage we can look at presenting something where uh, people have the more laptop interactive. more interactive one. But we just want to make you aware that this is available. Uh, and very useful, and more and more of the property practitioners are using this information. Yeah, and like Alfie uh, said, it's saving you time. Um, yeah. So you know this portion or this uh, place is sellable, or it's not, or it's for the right purpose, or it's not going to be for the right purpose. So yes, please make use of this. Um, this recording will be available, so I will send it to you. You can just pop me an email um, if you would like that. But yes, thank you, Moritz. Oh, pleasure. Okay, uh, all good. Can we move on to you? Uh, the next slide, uh, yeah, would be on the uh, Surveyor General, yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Okay, yeah, the Chief Surveyor General website. Uh, all good will just give you a, a, a brief uh, indication of what's available and what it's used for. And if there's any questions, but just pop it in the chat and we will discuss it after his presentation. Thanks, Robert. Yes. Um, maybe I should start off by saying that um, what is the purpose of the Office of Surveyor General and the Register of Deeds? In this case, we're just going to look at the Office of the Surveyor General. Um, when a person owns a property, he would um, have two documents that um, is used to identify what property he owns, how large it is, and who the owner is. Mm -hmm. Whom the owner is and the um, uh, conditions um, related there to is in your title deed, but what we're going to handle now is the diagram or the general plan or the sectional title plan. And these plans are approved and stored in the Office of the Survey General, and they um, relate to the property you own, and it's a very important document um, the old farmers used to refer to it as cart and transport, and they were very serious about that because that, apart from your wife and your gun, is most are the <laughs> most important things you own. So, as that is that information. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, the Office of the General basically stores um, imaging images of documents that are attached to title deeds in the Office of the Surveyor General. And uh, basically they are diagrams and general plans and sectional title plans. Diagrams can be diagrams of farm portions or, or urban or portions of urban or servitudes or leases. Um, uh, and they normally relate to properties or um, any rights that burden these properties like servitudes or leases. Uh, a general plan is a different form, form of this image. Um, it, a general plan depicts a large number of properties registered at the deeds office on one plan, a general plan. And a sectional title plan is a plan, as it states, that has to do with sectional title units. Um, and uh, we'll explain more about that when we get to the, to the sectional title plans. Um, our next slide uh, shows um, how we access the, the, the website of the Chief Register uh, Surveyor General. Um, we in Googled Surveyor General and we got a link to the Chief Surveyor General's website. Um, on this website, generally, you can search for an image on this website in two ways, basically, by the property description, or you can search it by the Surveyor General document number. Um, on the left there, you can see I, um, I, added, I we listed a few um, examples of how you can, um, um, the description and the document numbers. Uh, further on in the presentation, we will show examples of that. Um, the next slide, um, we are showing now uh, how you can search for a property description, uh, for a property image by the property description. On this uh, um, page, it's very important to um, use 100% correct information, seeing as if you should um, 
give any wrong information, it would not reveal any results at all. And you might think that there isn't an image, but it's just because you input the, the information incorrectly. And so you can get that information you can obtain obviously via wind deed, light stone, or from your title deed. Yeah, from, from, from your title deed, deed. Yes. Um, so that would be the, the, the information you input here or the uh, information as listed on your title deed, and you can find it in different places as in wind deed and so forth. Yes. So um, it has a few options. Um, the province is, is quite obvious. Um, then you must um, specify whether it's a rural or an urban area. Um, this is, um, it, all properties apart from farm portions are um, categorized as urban. In other words, agricultural holding would also be urban. Okay. Um, then one would put in the town name. Um, if you have it in a town, if it's a farm portion, you would enter in the region name, the registration division. The whole of the country has been divided into registration revisions. So example would be JR in the Victoria area and JQ in Rustenburg and such forth. Um, the parcel number would be your, your farm number, mm -hmm. if you have a farm, or an earth number in a township. And then the portion number would be if should the farm or the earth have been subdivided, that would be the portion of that farm or the number of the earth number. And then the last is optional. And I would recommend that you treat it that way. Um, if you mm -hmm. don't, you might get, we revert back to what I said in the beginning, you might get no results. So you'd rather treat it that way. Okay, uh, okay so I just want to confirm uh, with town over here. We don't mean Bronkostreit or something like that. We mean the suburb. Exactly. Like Heisfontein would be the town. It, you, it's not Pretoria. It would not be, for mean? instance, Woodhill. Yes. In Woodhill's case, it would be Pretoria's Park. It would, uh, be, it yeah. would be the, the registered name of that town in the office, in the deeds office. Yes. And that very often, as Arby mentioned now, Bronkostreit is not Bronkostreit, it's the town Erasmus. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, isn't, awesome. isn't that also indicated on your municipal account? That, your, that your should be property yes, description yes, that, and the township name. Yes. Yeah. Generally, yeah. you can find the, the proper property description on your municipal account. Okay. account that's correct. Okay. Yes. okay. But it's also very important as far as a, a properties practition is concerned that they should revert back to the title deed because that yeah. is the actual thing and it, we, we must. Um, um, be quite clear that the title deed is important. That's what you own, mm -hmm. and yes. and and the, and the, the the image of the surveyor general depicts how large it is and other other. Things. So it's wise then to say on listing ask for the title deed. Yes. Definitely, yeah. um, it, the because it's building plans. It's, yes. it's extremely yeah. important for a property practitioner to get all the basic information he needs. And the most basic information apart from, I would say, the council account yeah. would be the title deed because the title, title deed contains lots of information that's very important. You, you may have a property that is <coughs> hectares large and, and most of it is taken up by William Nickel Drive. Uh, and you wouldn't uh, know, uh, you, would, you might think that you own five hectares, but you only uh, own 500 square meters because it's burdened by some uh, servitude or some servitude or something that's listed in your title deed. So it's very important to have a look at your title deed. They, they, in your title deed, you would also find um, uh, building line restrictions. You may have very large building line restrictions that uh, prohibits you from building m most of the property. Sure. So it's very important to check your title deed yeah. and then um, part of your uh, security of tenure is within the diagram yeah. that you own. So it's quite important to, yeah. to look at your title deed. And uh, maybe um, it's worth saying as well that if you do not have all the information as a property practitioner and there are um, legal action later, you might be right. liable. So it's yeah. important to take note of these things. Yes. Yes. Um, we have another slide here. Um, uh, that just um, explains if you search for a property by property description, it just shows how you can put in the township name, which in this case is Kharshfontein. It's obviously it's an urban area and it's in Kharting. Uh, the parcel number is Earth, 
235, and it's portion one of Earth 235. Earth 235 had been subdivided. Um, so we use um, we use this in the slide. If if it, if this had been a far portion, you would have instead of Kharsontain put in your registration division, which would have been JR. And we have the parcel number, you would have put in the farm number, and then um, still you put in the portion of the farm. So this is the basic um, layout of when you search for property by property name. Um, our next slide, when you click, let's go back a bit. Um, when you click search in this slide, it moves you to the next slide where you will have over here uh, the links to the different images. Oh. When clicking on these uh, links, the image will download to your computer to the designated folder in a TIFF format. In other words, the format of the image is not PDF or JPEG, it's yeah. TIFF format. I just mentioned that because very often uh, we get queries where people say, I can't see the image. And so it, you must just find a viewer that can see it in a TIFF yeah. format. Uh, this is very simple. You just click on the link. Very often there are quite a number of, 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 of links because they are often, apart from the, the, the earth diagram, you have servitude diagrams and lease diagrams and also endorsement uh, images of endorsements that have taken place on this, uh, on this property. So you can have a look at all the images and they can supply you with lots of information that can be useful. Okay. Um, our next slide is an example of an earth diagram. Um, an earth diagram comprises mainly of, uh, at the top here, you will see these slides, our sides and angles. The, side, the sides are the geometric um, distances between the beacons of the property. And it's maybe uh, also pertinent here to mention that a boundary of um, a property property does not necessarily correspond to a wall. Um, yeah. One must be aware of that. Um, there are some coordinates here, which is um, actually more important for a land surveyor. Normal uh, property owners would not be interested in that. Um, on, a, on an earth diagram, you have a beacon description here. This is quite important because those are the descriptions of the corners of your property as the beacons were placed originally by those land surveyor that created the property. Um, generally, these beacon descriptions soon gets lost mm -hmm. when fence boundaries and walls are erected. And um, so, if, is, if they erect a fence yes. outside that boundary, yes. then it's illegal. Yes, it's illegal. Yeah. Your, boundary, your property boundaries extend to that beacon. Or the position where that beacon had been before it was disturbed. Oh, okay. And that's why the coordinates are. That's important. why there are coordinates and dimensions. Yeah. So that should that beacon be disturbed, yeah. that the land surveyor can come later and replace the beacon in its correct position. And then from that, determine to what extent the boundary walls are accurate or not. Yeah. Perhaps I can just come in there. I think it's one of the misrepresentations that's often done by uh, property practitioners. If you don't make sure that you have this information, often owners move boundary walls, sometimes between next door neighbors, but most often where there's big uh, road reserves or where there is servitude areas, for instance, the ESCOM servitude, uh, where it's not easily noticeable. So the fact that you see boundaries when you list a property is not an indication that that is what you are going to sell. And of course, if you make a representation to a potential buyer that this is what he's buying, and it comes out later that uh, some of that is uh, belongs to ESCOM or to council, it is a misrepresentation and there can be repercussions. Uh, we already dealt with a case where uh, my neighbors have moved the wall between it and the buyer took the estate agent to court and uh, it cost her dearly uh, because she did not do a proper due diligence on the property that she was selling. Uh, and it's often not even the owner that you're dealing with that 
uh, made the change. It, he might have bought it that way, but eventually it can come down to the property pra practitioner that made a misrepresentation on what uh, he is, uh, what the buyer is going to, to be the owner of. So that's why it's important to make sure that you use this documentation. Um, as far as the images are concerned that is stored at the Office of Surveyor General, this diagram would be the first example of such an image. Um, a further example, um, uh, wait, um, yeah, would be general plans and uh, sectional title plans. In the next slide, we just um, listed uh, the website or the web page that we can search for a document by the SG description, that would be the SG number listed normally at the right top of the, of the document. It comprises of a number and a year. Um, this is very simple. You can find this um, on your title deed, as mentioned previously, it normally refers to this. And um, if you just um, pick the second option, search for document by number, and you input the number there, then the images should pop up on the next screen. Um, this is an example of how you can input the, the, the SG reference number to search for an SG document and then download the document in a TIFF format, as we mentioned previously. Um, this is an example of a general plan. A general plan um, is a larger plan um, that shows uh, a number of ermine in a township um, as opposed to a diagram for each uh, different uh, earth or a farm portion. Um, so an earth can be created either by a diagram when subdivided or on a general plan if you do a survey for a number of properties at the same time. A general plan, similarly, this is just an extract of a, sing of a general plan. A general plan would, apart from the earth number, which is circled there and the line drawn between them also shows the dimensions of the earth um, and the street names. And then there would be um, separate tables that's not listed on the screen now that lists the areas of the different urban on the general plan, even though it's not shown here. It also has coordinates and other things and beacon descriptions that uh, we're not dealing with right now. But as far as um, property practitioners are concerned, um, they would um, refer to this general plan for the dimensions of the earth and the area. That's what would be important for them. And there could be possibly servitudes and such also listed, which is not an example yet. Um, okay, uh, sectional title plans. Yes, yeah, sectional title plans. Um, Maybe I should have mentioned right when we started that in South Africa, you can own a property in one of two ways, um, full title or sectional title. Um, this is now the second one uh, in a sectional title. Um, a sectional title comprises mainly a sectional title plan, mainly of four sheets. So we're gonna do a quick run over of the four sheets. You, there are some extra sheets as well, but these are the main ones you will find. The example we used is for a larger complex uh, sectional title complex. This one comprises of 31 buildings and this is sheet one. The sheet one of a sectional title plan would mainly list a property description. Um, where is our mouse? It would actually show the scheme name there. A uh, property description would be the earth number and the township it's situated in and the, in the area, um, uh, the local authority name, and it would list the buildings and how the buildings are divided into sections and common property. Um, one can also, when, which is not that important, but maybe we can mention it, when a property developer develops a sectional title scheme, he can develop the sectional title in phases and um, reserve the right to extend the section later. If he does so, he, if he does that, he, we, on this sheet, he, uh, we make a note of the caveat that there's a caveat that he had done so. That is what we refer to as real rights eventually. Yeah. And if you see that, we know it's problematic. Yes, when you sell a sectional title property in, in, a, in, a, in a sectional title scheme, um, a buyer might want to know if somebody's going to erect a six story building right in front of his window. Yeah. And you, will, you could very possibly be liable if he later finds out and you had not mentioned that to him. So it's quite important to be aware of that. 
Um, this sheet also uh, lists whether um, the sectional title scheme is burdened by exclusive use areas. Uh, there's a note there at the bottom where the, the, the cursor is right here at the bottom, but you will see it there and you must take cognizance of that as well and search for that. Our, our next um, slide is, is what we refer to as the block plan of a sectional title plan. The block plan mainly uh, shows the, the earth, the outside boundaries of the earth and the positions of the buildings as they relate to, to the outside position of, of the boundaries of the property. And over here, you can normally see if, if there are servitudes over the property. And quite often one can, the exclusive use areas over the ground is also shown here. Uh, I'm using the term exclusive use areas without explaining what it is but maybe it would be handled in the questions later. I don't want to waste too much time with that. Um, uh, and there's also some notes here that one would list sectional uh, servitudes if there are servitudes on the property. And then lastly, in a sectional title plan, oh no, it's not lastly, we first need the floor plans. That's quite important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the floor plan shows um, how the buildings are divided into sections and common property. Common property would be things like stairwells and storerooms and service ducts and such. Yeah. As well as the gardens and, and stuff like that most of the time. That yes, the gardens will be common property in most on the ground, yes, on the ground. On the ground. Yes. But uh, the floor plan specifically shows the buildings. Yes. So it's how the building is. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, yes, okay. yes. So that's on the floor plan. Okay. So in this case, in this example we used, um, the the two figures, the large figures, are the ground floor and the first floor of building five as listed here. Mm -hmm. So one can clearly see that on the ground floor, you only have um, these solid lines representing the boundaries of the sections on the ground floor and no common property. And then you can clearly see if you um, overlay this first floor on the ground floor, you would see that one has some stairs going up here with a landing at the top leading into the sections. Uh, these figures at the top just show um, loose standing buildings with only one floor. Mm -hmm. And just for interest sake, it's covered now by our uh, um, title block at the bottom here. But those little A's there um, means it describes that boundary. And that is a, a stoop. And the boundary of the section there is the, the edge of the stoop projected to ground level, which means these are little open stoops that doesn't have walls. So if you look at this, that is, if you find something like that, it might be something like that. And this dotted lines normally represents common property, as do the stairs here. Okay. That, that building would be the building at the gate. Where, um, and then now we come to the last page of a section of title plan, which be, which be the participation quota sheet. This, this, that's correct. This is a very important sheet because it determines, it shows, first of all, the area of your section, which is very important. And if you should extend your section in any way whatsoever, the area would change. And that would change the participation quotas, which, which would determine your contribution to the uh, maintenance of the property. Um, but I think as far as a property practitioner is concerned, this sheet is especially uh, important because we found over the years that um, uh, this has caused a lot of uh, difficulty for property owners when buying and selling sectional titles that very small extensions to the sections that may in your case be regarded as insignificant is in fact not so because even if you do a very small alteration like erecting a small lava or just maybe closing a, a stoop that, that was open yeah. previously, this changes the area of your section, which affects the security of the bond holder of a prospective buyer. And it would, in most cases, have the consequence that the bond would not be approved um, and that the whole process of building plan approval and sectional title amendment would have to be followed, which takes it, delays. It, it, takes, it takes far too long for somebody that wants to sell a property. Um, and as, as far as a property practitioner is concerned, this is something that the that property practitioner should pay very detailed attention to, and they must make very sure they must compare the sectional title plan filed in the office of the Surveyor General 
with what is actually on the ground and compare that with the building plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very, very important and we need to stress that because um, if that could cause delays and damages, um, if, if a sale is, um, if you continue with the sale and agreement and it, it, it appears later that these things are um, as, okay. as occurred, um, it can be very embarrassing. It, you know, yeah. People can lose a lot of money. So you know, people must pay attention to this. Okay. Um, then I think um, as far as I'm concerned, Okay. Yes, I think that is, I think you can move it to the next one. That's, I think that's it. That's the questions. Um, just on the wall. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, uh, right, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so she joined later. Any questions? I know about me specifically asked. Um, you can unmute um, you. Well, you can ask Okay, can, can I talk? Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Okay, Ons begin by residential, dan gaan ons oor dichtheid residential. Dan is die volgende trappie in my verwijsingsraamwerk, en dis ook my graag by julle wil leer, wat makkelijker om te kry is offices versus commercial. Dis makkelijker om kantoorrechte te kry as commerciële rechte, as een mens in een residentiële op een hoof A-route wil soneer. Is dit correct of is dit verkeerd? Ok, uh, it's not 100% correct. Uh, basically, that's the purpose of the Regional Spatial Development Framework. So what Council do every five years is they prepare this document where they indicate what type of uses they will support in case of an application for a rezoning. It's so critical that they won't even accept an application for any uh, land use that is not supported by the RSDF. Yeah. And that's why it's such an important document. Go to the website. If you see the property is zoned residential one now, you go to the RSDF of 2018, that is the applicable one at this stage, and you can see if council indicated in the RSDF for offices, then a rezoning application for offices will be fairly easy. Yeah. As long as you can, can comply to all the other conditions like parking and all of those things. But there's no question that council will support offices there. Yeah. It's just doing the details. Council will not even look at the application for commercial or for any, yeah. anything else. So the, it's not difficult when you stick to the uh, uh, proposals as in the RSTF yeah. and that's basically so all applications in a way is at the same difficulty level if you see to the to the regional spatial development framework yeah. uh, I mean there is uh, exceptions like filling stations and stuff like that that is per se difficult applications because of the environmental impacts and things like that but purely from the rezoning uh, side they're all the same level of difficulties if you stick to the proposed use in the regional spatial development framework. Okay, that's that's well answered. My next question, if I may just add, um, conclude my questions to you, thank you so much for the opportunity, is that if we have a zoning indication for offices, we yes. can still apply for office, a mixed use zoning for offices as well as residential because residential is a downgrade, it's not an upgrade to commercial. So if there's an indication of offices, it doesn't bind us to offices, we can apply for both offices residential development, is that correct? Uh, it, it, it may be, it will depend on, on the situation. Uh, it depends what the zoning is now as well. I mean, if you have residential now, you might be able to keep some residential there and, 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 and add some offices to it. But I'm doubtful that if you have, let's say, a commercial property, 
and you want to go to offices plus residential, uh, council will have a, a very good look at it. But typically, that's you're right. That's not yeah. what happened. In a way, it is it is a lower uh, yeah. Yeah. type of use. Uh, but I think if the offices is the main use and you have uh, have some residential or what with it, uh, you might be successful. Yes. But we recommend that anything that is not standard according to the RSDF, uh, let's inquire at council, let them take it to their meetings and let us get something in writing uh, that indicate that they will support something like that. They okay, have no obligation to, to support it, whereas if it's 100% in line with the RSDF, it's already a council decision that have accepted that use. Anything that's not 100% that we need to, to confirm with council. Yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for the information. Okay. Thank you, Bambi, for your question. Any other questions? Are you all full of knowledge? Nothing else? Okay. Then um, thank you. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, please, you've got my contact details. Pop the question, email it to me and I can just extend the, the question yeah. to, to my guest here. That will give you the professional <laughs> opinion answer. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's another one. In, but, um, okay, perfect. Have a lovely day, okay. have a successful day, and thank you to my guest host thank um, you very much. for joining us. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day, okay. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Well done. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.